their Shadow Fiend off the ground, just got Shane killed in the mid lane in Liquid. They drafted a farm heavy later game squad that just really got what they needed to out of the laning phase and came online and won game two, tied it up. So DC looking to prove their worth here. Liquid looking to take the series back into their hands. And now we are on with the first picks. Got to have that tree ban just a little bit too strong still. Monkey King still available. Haven't seen a whole lot of Magnus in the series we've seen tonight, but still a lot of priority placed on that hero in general in the meta right now. And well, what are you hoping to see in this Brax? You know, I'd love to see Magnus. I love the hero, but neither of these teams really favor it. Magnus definitely falling out of favor with a lot of teams. I think very, very few teams still want to play this hero. Very slow hero, so it's understandable. And Crystal Maiden first pick. Now we'll see if DC wants to pick up the Monkey King for the third game in the row. Yeah, I mean, they can go for it. Dubu has had some pretty all right success. Game one definitely went his way when he was able to get the Basher and the Shadow Blade pretty early on. Had some super clutch Wukong commands, but yeah, game number two, it just didn't feel right. He stopped to go in for the Midas, didn't even have phase boots by the time the game ended. It was just not great. Not a Monkey King that really got off the ground, but they'll go for it again. Looking to try it out and... I guess Digital Chaos had a little soul search and figured out what didn't work about their draft last time, and they'll shake it up. Yep, it's definitely one of these heroes that uh, are really hit or miss, right? Some games you see Monkey King just completely go off, and then some games you see Monkey King just struggling to scrape together any sorts of farm at all, dies every team fight, <laughs> and just really doesn't feel that effective. But, all right, out comes Legion Commander, another strong hero this patch so far. Everyone's been playing this hero on pretty much every team. Very, very good in the lane. Dual, great lockdown. Press the attack, an excellent heal. Also removes disables like CM's Frostbite. Yep, changing it up. We're not going to see Bulba go for his Abaddon the third time in a row. This time, Legion's going to be there. But Team Liquid, they go for a clockwork here. Some good initiation. Might have a tricky time in the lane, but again, the mid game is where he really starts thriving. And what are the chances we think Liquid are going to be going in for that Shadow Fiend to get the Cog Soul combo to start him off well in lane? Um, I don't know. Unless it really looks like a good Shadow Fiend game, I think they'll probably try to pair up the Clockwork with the Invoker, which I expect DC to ban out. Yeah, I mean, but, um, DC do have first pick in this next phase, so if they wanted to get Abed his Invoker, they could go for that, but again, Team Liquid can counter that pretty easily. Yeah, I don't know if it looks like it's going to be the best pick for them. They ban out the Terror Blade. I wonder if we'll see a Spectre ban here instead of the... What was it? It was the Naga Siren, right? Actually, we'll probably see the Naga Siren ban still. Yep, Team Liquid appropriately scared of that. It can just delay the games a little bit too long, let DC get a little bit too farmed. So we'll see. Team Liquid making up their mind here. Other notable things to ban what DC have been thriving on. Already took out the Weaver. Uh, Juggernaut, still a hero that Mason loves to play. Abed could take it in the mid lane if necessary, but well, they'll take out the Rubik. No surprises there. Just a really good all around utility support. Yep, very good against the Clockwork. He can lift him out of the Cogs and then pretty much kill him in lane. Very hard to lane against that when you don't want to cast Cogs at all. DC taking their time for this next ban. I mean, Liquid, what happened last game is they just picked really strong laners. They picked heroes that farm up and get active later on in the game. And the chain kills mid really helped set them up for success. So maybe a good part of Liquid's strategy is just lock down Abed, pick heroes that rotate to the mid pretty early. But Liquid... We'll see. Anything you really want Liquid to be picking up here? Anything you think could really help them out? Go back in for the Spectre? Um, they definitely want to make sure they have a favorable mid matchup because it's clearly obvious that DC heavily rely around uh, Abed's gameplay. And if he's crippled in the lane phase, just like we saw in the last game, it was the Tinker versus the Shadow Fiend. He had such a hard time. Shaker even came in to rotate later on and just killed him over and over. So yeah, probably looking for pretty good matchups as DC their gameplay looks like it does rely on these uh, winning lanes a lot of the time. Well, Spectre going to be picked up by Digital Chaos here, so taking a page out of Liquid's book. I I'm assuming we're going to see Mason just play it in the safe lane, not getting anything too crazy like a mid-Spectre, but uh, what are the challenges that come with picking a Spectre, especially this early on in the draft? Well, with Spectre, you need to make sure you can secure his lane because he's not the strongest laner. He has like 48 damage, and all these offlaners are now building poor man shield. They're just tanking it up. But uh, yeah, there is a clockwork. So unless Team Liquid really want to dedicate a lot of resources to clockwork, or maybe throw clockwork in the safe lane and then try for some aggro, 
But that doesn't seem kind of like Team Liquid style. They're always playing these heavy late game cores. There's still the Naga Siren in the pool, but Naga not the best hero against Legion. Spectre is also not bad against Naga. And Team Liquid go for the Lina, a strong mid laner. All right. What counters Lina pretty well? I mean, she's super squishy. Are there mid laners that can just totally destroy her? Um, she lanes well against everything, but TA destroys her throughout the mid game. Once TA picks up that blink and desolator, it's really difficult for Lina to deal with that, especially if she kind of has fallen behind in the mid game. Yeah, I feel like TA could be a pretty good pick overall here. If Clockwork even hook shots onto her and locks her down, TA really excels in that 1v1 combat. So we'll see. DC taking some time to decide. Going into their fourth pick here. Still need a secondary support. Could get a lot of use out of uh, well, who they've been playing. They've been playing a little bit of Sand King, just a, a small amount. Uh, Keeper of the Light still available if they wanted to go for that, just to kind of break up the fights, get a good blind going on. And Wow, okay, Liquid flipped this right back around and go for a Naga of their own. All right, Naga, sorry. You know, Naga's actually strong in lane. She has like six, almost seven armor. I think she gets seven armor with like one branch or something, but Riptide very strong early on. Definitely has a lot more lane presence than Spectre. They could go for some kind of aggro lane into the Spectre to try to get their heroes better matchups. Yeah, I mean, just based on the heroes so far, do you think we're going to go for, you know, mid-game team fights and early push, or is this just going to be Spectre farms and Naga farms and 100 minutes in we'll have some sort of clash? Well, it looks like Team Liquid, they don't really want to just AFK farm. They also want to be able to use the Song of the Siren to take team fights. They have Clockwork set up so they can use Song of the Siren, they can find the Warlock, kill him instantly, or they can just wait till the rocks drop and then use the Song. They have the song to reset the duel as well, but they'll definitely look to a team fight with their ultimates because they want to take these fights. Um, DC, they also have strong team fight heroes as well, but if it gets reset by the song of the siren, it definitely favors Team Liquid. All right, last band coming out. They take out the Darkseer. Uh, I mean, I guess anticipating that maybe they might roam the Clockwork as a position four, and they just want to keep their lane stable, but. Well, not going to be an option anymore, and Liquid get one more ban against DC. Probably going to be taking out one of those mid laners that Abed desperately needs. I mean, what can Abed go for here? We talked about the TA potential. If that gets banned out, what's the next best choice? I think TA looks a lot less good for DC now that Naga Siren came out. TA is extremely bad against Naga. Does not handle illusions well at all. And the matchup in the mid lane is actually very hard against Selena. It's just in the mid game where... Uh, TA does well against Lina, so I don't think they'll go for that. Maybe they'll try to go for something along the lines of they could go back for the Invoker, SF, these kind of heroes, but again, Lina, strong matchup against these heroes, and they have the roaming potential from Crystal Maiden and even the Clockwork if it is support, because right now, DC's heroes, they don't really want to roam, you know? Monkey King, he's not the strongest roamer anymore. Alright, out comes the Ricky. Okay. That is a uh, bold choice. I like it. DC, last pick here. We have seen Abed go in for a little bit of Tinker recently in the last 30 days. Is that something that could do well here, or is the push already taken care of? I think uh, Naga Siren is one of the biggest Tinker counters in the game, because uh, they play the exact same game style, where they want a lot of time to get to their items, and then he doesn't deal with Radiance when they nuke the Naga illusions out and everything, but it kind of reveals his positioning, and Naga can song and just go on him. It's just not good. And out comes Amber Spirit. All right. Nice choice here. So we have all our drafts for game number three. This is going to be the last game in this series, the last game of the uh, round three mid in our Swiss style bracket. These teams looking to seed themselves nicely in for round four. Based on draft alone, who are you liking? Um, I think I like Team Liquid's draft a lot. They have a lot of ways to take team fights. They have Clockwork Hook into the Ricky Smoke, Lina setup as well. Naga Siren can even start these fights with the, the Song of the Siren, drop the Ricky Cloud on top. And I just think they have what... This is like a Team Liquid draft. You know, they have the Naga Siren, they have these heroes, Crystal Maiden. It just looks like their kind of draft. Yeah, this is going to be pretty difficult. I mean, what's Digital Chaos's game plan to execute this cleanly? Because clearly Liquid got what they want. They've got a clear plan on what they're doing and how they're laning. DC's best shot is? Um, so DC, they can play a lot off this Legion Commander. Legion's really strong in the offlane against what they have. 
Also, their team fight is not weak by any means. It's just, it really is just a matter of who gets the initiation first. Spectre can haunt to kind of set up these team fights so Legion can get the duel off. Warlock can drop the rock. Ember Spirit, tons of magic AoE damage along with Warlock's fatal bonds. It's just one of these games where it just depends who gets the, the fight, who starts it first. All right, so we are starting it off. This is going to be a very interesting match. What lanes are you looking forward to watching? What do you think is going to be the bloodiest, the feistiest? Definitely the mid lane. Lina has a pretty good matchup against the Ember Spirit, but Ember Spirit with some roaming potential could do something. Monkey King, not the greatest roamer anymore, of course. He typically likes to sit in the safe lane and zone. Crystal Maiden, though, very, very good roamer. And, of course, the Ricky as well. All right, so Spectre versus Naga. I mean, if this does go really late, if we're still talking about like an 80 minute game, uh, who's looking stronger there? The Ember and the Spectre versus Naga Siren and Ricky, who's going to be six slotted at that point? Slick slotted Ricky? Yeah, he can do it. I believe in him. All if right. this is like 90 minutes, you think Kuroki won't get six slotted? No, I think he'll be naked. He'll have like, oh, well, you never know. It depends what kind of farm he gets early on in the game. But, uh,. I don't know, it's really hard to say because Spectre and Naga, once they're really farmed, they kind of do the same thing in these team fights. <clears throat> but uh, it just comes down to how much farm these other heroes can get, how much farm Clockwork can get, Legion Commander can get, Lina versus the Ember Spirit. Like if Warlock and Monkey King are extremely poor in this game, they're not going to be able to do anything to this Naga Siren. They won't even survive these team fights, they'll die to just AoE nuke damage. Same thing with Crystal Maiden and Ricky though, even the Clockwork when Haunt comes out. Very hard to deal with. All right, so starting things off, we got Kuroki just poking around. We'll find Bulba over here in the jungle, but may go for a rune steal. Not going to be anything anything too crazy. Got three DC heroes down here. Do you think Mason's actually going to need this tri lane, or is he going to be left alone as soon as the game starts and these guys start rotating? They'll definitely just hang around. They don't have really anything else to do. Warlock doesn't want to leave the lane until much later. He might go top to help LC, but. I, I don't know, it just seems unlikely. Ooh. Monkey King can probably solo zone. Abed. But they're making a move here on Abed. Yeah, he's in some trouble here. Definitely going to get denied the rune. It looks like it will be picked up by Matumba Man. And Abed already chunked down to half health. Going to have to tango up and gets frostbitten here. Potentially for his blood. They don't quite have the finish for it. And Abed will just use that iron branch tango. But already starting out at a deficit. Doesn't get that rune and has to be very careful about Miracle harassing him. Lena laning yeah. is just so scary. Her range is ridiculous. Yeah, he's up against this tough Lina matchup too. The hill or the creep block is on his hill too. This is not a good start for Abed. He's gonna have his salve delayed or tangos, whatever sort of regen he's bringing. Oh, up top, we good start. are gonna have Bulba snapped up by the frost fight. Gonna have to play a lot more defensively here. We've seen Bulba's Legion commander before, and you know it's pretty brave. It goes into these fights. It kind of tanks the wave a little bit, but Bulba's gonna have to be very safe here. Yep, both offlaners having kind of a pretty hard start here. Um, mind control, clockwork, he can always find his experience, but how much farm can he really get in this lane when a Monkey King is a little pudge courier hitting him <laughs> over and over? Yep, he's a... Uh, Why is that in the game? It's it's a cute little mechanic. Look, he's a tree. But Yeah, you said that the tree's going to kill you. That's okay. Anyway, mind control, like you mentioned, not going get, to be getting a whole ton of farm, just has to 1v1 with Dubu, and Mason should have a pretty safe lane down here unless there's going to be rotations in, so Clockwork just going to be all about the levels, trying to soak whatever farm he can, but he's all about that level 6 and then wants to rotate. Yep, this mid lane is extremely hard for Ember now, especially with that start. He has to use all his region at the beginning, and Flame Guard doesn't do a whole lot in this matchup. Yep, going to be forced back. I mean, this is really tough. Up top... You've got Bulba getting slapped down to a third health, just going to be going and tangoing up, and that's the last of his regen. You can see he's got a magic stick queued up, but it's still going to be a while before he can fly that in, and Naga going to be free farming as well. That seems like it's real dangerous for DC. What's their best option to deal with this? Just kind of stick it out and hope Legion Commander can get something? Well, Legion is getting to the point where she's got a level 2. Ricky's going to move around because he wants to get these bounty runes. He can lane a bit better now. Especially once he skills up the overwhelming odds, so he has no real threat of dying. But uh, he's just dipping out into the jungle for now. Maybe Monkey King will make a rotation up into the top lane, but he's actually jumping on the mid lane here. Miracle might be in some trouble. Nah, he's just gonna walk but back nope. uphill. Abed doesn't have those searing chains yet, so yeah, he procs the Jingu Mastery, but Dubu can't really do anything about that. 
We do have Ricky kind of crawling around the mid lane, maybe thinking about a courier snipe, but a courier's nestled safely in base right now. Yep, mind controls often looks a bit easier than uh, Bulbas for now. Team Liquid playing, they're putting a lot of pressure, or they were at least in the first two minutes on zoning this Legion commander. But uh, now, once LC gets leveled, it's kind of inevitable. Ricky wants to roam around to get these bounty runes, kind of see what he can do across the map. Down here, we got Kuroki postured up. I mean, maybe looking for some harass onto Demon, but more just keeping eyes on the situation, making sure nothing's stacking up too nicely. So, oh, chasing in. They're going to be pinging it out, but Demon walks safely back under his tower. So, overall momentum still looking good for Mason. Our last hit's going to be led up by the Naga, who's just gotten, uh, again, a really free lane as Bulba has to play super, super safe. Now, down bottom, there is going to be a scan here. Radiant know that there's some dire heroes crawling around Kuroki. Making his way they in. They spot the Ricky. Yep. Mason just zoned back by Cogs, burns up a little mana, but altogether he's fine. Meanwhile, mid lane, Abed's still having a lot of trouble. Last game and this game, his mid lane was just really punished. I think Liquid allocating the appropriate resources to make sure that he's shut down because he's really a huge part of DC's momentum. Yeah, Abed just hit level 4, and Lena's one creep away from 5. That's just the price he has to pay for Monkey King leeching his experience. But uh, he's got the nice shrine. This is a tough matchup, big time. And Lena, not afraid of Monkey King at all. Monkey King's actually going to go back down to the bottom lane. Yeah, good lane setup from Liquid so far. They look like they're winning all of their lanes. Looks a little bit similar to game number two. And of course, we saw in game number two, Liquid just balling out of control because they had a free farming core. And well, Naga, similar story here, just kind of chilling. Matumba Man already 32 last hits at four and a half minutes going to have that Iron Talon flying in, so the jungle is going to be even quicker. The farm just going to accelerate. What's going to be the go point here? What is Liquid waiting for until they get real active and real scary? Um, I imagine they're just going to keep trying to farm as much as they can. Nagasaren wants to get to that Radiance. Clockwork level 6 is their obvious first, like, go button. You know, they can pressure a lot with the hook shot, Ooh. especially Top in lane. the mid lane. Bulba getting body blocked in. Matumba Man trying to keep on top of her. They got Riptide up in one second. Oh, Bulba turns to go back in, and that will be first blood. GH snaps that one up, and, well, going to be feeling real good for Liquid there as down bottom got some more harass as well. Mason just being healed up by his buddies. Ooh, Dubu snaps up the kill onto Miracle. Abed gets low, but very nice. They're able to turn that one into uh, at least a good trade, taking out the mid. Yeah, Miracle is playing very aggressive, and Dubu was there on the trees ready to jump, and they're able to kill him there. Very nice, that's exactly what Ember Spirit needs to kind of get what he needs out of the lane. It's still going to be a tough matchup, but once he hits his level 6, there's a lot more kill potential on this Lina, and she'll have to be a bit more careful. Yeah, Abed, unfortunately, empty bottle, no more regen, has to walk all the way back to the shrines behind the uh, racks in order to get back in. Oh, yeah. Demon down bottom lane gets cogged by Mind Control. He's in a big trouble. Yep, Dubu going to be TPing in as well. They will be able to go ahead and get the kill on the Warlock, but Mind Control might be in some serious trouble. Kuroki is going to jump in, but then just bails out, leaving his friend for dead, as there's just no way of salvaging this. Mason going to be able to go and get the kill on that, so Spectre... Now starting that snowball, just getting that free farm, and now starting to roll kills into that as well. Yep, Monkey King's actually in this, and he has three stacks from Chingu Mastery. They might be able to make a play out onto mid lane here. Ahmed's about to hit level 6 in like two creeps. Yep, killing Miracle would be real nice here. They got the Boundless Strike to uh, start things off. Still no Wukong's command, only level 4. Now Miracle going to be taking some damage from the Sleight of Fist, and that's going to be the go. They just need a little bit more, and they can't get it. There's a TP in from Crystal Maiden cancelled, as Miracle is going to be just fine, backing off and playing safe. Meanwhile, down bottom, Mason, low health and no mana. May have to back off from this lane just a little bit. Mind Control going to be hitting that level 5 pretty soon, and almost has what he needs to out of the lane. Yeah, Clockwork getting really scary in this lane now, hitting level 5 already. Two points into that Battery Assault. And with the uh, Ricky roaming down, if someone gets trapped in cogs with the smoke screen on top, it's definitely death for them. We got GH trying to chase in. They will eventually get the net onto Bulba. He's able to purge off the net, but gets dropped right back into the uh, frost fight. Makes it back, but isn't going to be able to give any contest to that free farming Naga Siren, who's starting to be a real issue. Almost 50 last hits onto the Naga. Why is that sorted like that? Ooh, there we go. Yeah, she's going to be 3,300 net worth right now at only seven minutes in. And she shows no signs of slowing down anytime soon. DC unable to really pressure Naga Siren at all. 
they're trying to deal with their own safe lane right now. Clockwork getting a ton in this lane. Yeah, it looked tough for him. He got killed once, but since then hasn't been given away anything. Yep, he came back and got the solo kill off onto the Warlock. Very good for him. Warlock only level 3 at this stage of the game. Yep, certainly no ult. There is going to be Ricky moving in. Maybe they can go for a kill onto Demon here, and they're going to go ahead and try. Silence off, so the Boundless Strike won't be coming in. Cogs trapping too. Kuroki getting low right into the jaws of Mason, trying to run for it. Meanwhile, there is still going to be a kill coming out of Mind Control. He finds one and might be able to find another ult. Do Dubu, he goes down the Rocket Flare. Going to be coming in just in time. Mind Control is so oh, low. No, the Cogs to hold back Mason, and there's no mana for the Spectral Dagger. Mind Control lives through this gank. He actually is able to go in, get what he wants, and come out alive on the end. Oh my god, Mason wasn't expecting the stick, didn't stick on him, and Mind Control makes it out with his life. They're big plays here in this bottom lane. Yeah, that is exactly what Clockwork wanted. Shows off that level 6 in style. He's going to go heal up, and now Liquid can get a little bit more mobile. DC still waiting on their big team fight abilities. Obviously, a long time till that chaotic offering comes on. Ooh. Yeah, Bulba with the dual win up top, but he does go down to, to Matamba, man. Yep, Matumba Man getting pretty big. Naga Siren really uncontested for top farmer. Spectre, again, has had a free lane, but Naga is going crazy. Yeah, her net worth is really starting to skyrocket right now. She's got so much, like, compared to... Oh, oh how comes the haunt? Yep, Miracle. Miracle lane. In a lot of trouble there. It was a pretty big commit for that Lena kill, but definitely worth helping Abed just retain control of his lane. He had a really tough time starting out, but hasn't died yet. Cut it close a couple of times, but he's starting to get where he needs to be. Has that veil queued up. So we'll see Ember start to be having a little more impact as the game moves forward. Yep, this is going to be such an early Radiance from the Naga Siren. We saw last game, Radiance came out at like the 20 minute mark and it was still so impactful. This yep. is going to be like 14, maybe even uh, faster than that. Dubu. Keep an eyes on Matumba Man. They do have Legion Commander in the area. Matumba Man's very low mana. Does have just enough for that Song of the Siren. We'll see if he's going to be casting it here. Seeing two heroes in the area. There we go. Just going to be a song. Waiting for the rest of her buddies to come forward. They do have GH now ready with that Freezing Field. Looks like they're going to try to fight this out. The Freezing Field comes in, but immediate Boundless Strike onto GH. The net does hit onto Dubu. Going to get purged off by that heal from Bulba. And he's just going to be hopping away, so... I guess burned an ult from Liquid, cost a couple of resources. Meanwhile, down bottom, oh man, mind control again, almost living here, trying to make it towards the shrine. The urn will finish him off though. Spectre grabbing up that nice early urn, and well, now that it's filled up to two charges, he's feeling all right. Yep, nice early urn pickup there from the Spectre. Guarantees him a kill. That also will help him farm in the jungle later on, keeping him nice and healthy. Back towards our mid matchup, Lina gonna be level nine now. Still just sitting in, getting the farm he needs to. Ember Spirit also level 9, getting very close to that Veil. When does Ember Spirit want to start moving around? He's already got some remnants going for himself, but hasn't really left mid lane yet. Yeah, he wants that Veil before he really moves. But uh, in the meantime, they can come Ooh. to him and they can set up ganks on Miracle just like this. Yep, Searing Chains come forward and that's all they need to hold them back. Miracle goes in for the Laguna, tries to take Demon out with her, but Demon's going to be living through this and that's feeling real good. Meanwhile, up top, Kuroki just trying to keep eyes on Bulba, who finally enjoys some free lane farm. Yep, Naga Siren heading to the jungle. 2,500 gold now for our Naga. Spectre sitting on 1,200, but of course Spectre does have these other smaller items. Moving in, it looks like Radiant getting active here, hunting for the Naga Siren. They're going to see Naga Illusions farming this up, but it seems like this is the real one. They ping her out. That's the call. Remnant forward. They get the Searing Chain. Slap down with the Boundless Strike. Matumba Man just trying to run, but it's not going to be enough. And Abed now on a killing spree after what seemed to be a absolutely terrible lane. They're going to be turning this around, trying to get a kill on Miracle as well. Can they keep up with him? They go in. They drop the Golems just to make sure they get that kill, and it's super worth as now DC pick up the kill lead, starting to get oh. their cores stacked up in net worth as well. This is feeling great for DC. Yeah, Mason almost killed off the CM there. She was one hit from dying. Mind Control did rotate into the mid lane though. Let's see what he can do here. But yeah, DC just making great moves. They were able to catch out Nagasaren without his sleep cooldown up. That was the arcane rune usage on the Ember Spirit too. And now all of a sudden he's got a veil. All the Ember's the big winner in all these team fights, you know? He got his ass handed to him in lane, and now all of a sudden he's right back there. Lena looks like she's really struggling now. 
Yeah, that's a pattern we've seen before from Abed. As long as his teammates are there, as long as he's able to go and style in his opponent, he can usually come back from a bad start. Up here, we are going to have uh, Kuroki crawling around. Matamaban's going to make his way into lane. Bulba going to be jumped on here. He does get netted, but we do have Wukong's command coming in from the trees. Boundless Strike connects on two. Mind Control goes in, cogs up Bulba, but Bulba just going to keep fighting this one out. Maybe going for the duel here might be a good play, but no, Mind Control will get the kill. The monkey not going to finish him off. He's one hit from death. And he's going to be able to earn himself back up as Dubu just kind of sat back and watched that one happen. Didn't want to poke his head forward. GH, though, will be the sacrifice. Popped into the ult. Rocket Flare comes forward, getting Dubu low, but they're not able to find the kill. Net finally does connect, and oh man, the silence onto Abed. He's running for his life. Boundless Strike helps him out, buys him some space. Heal from the Warlock will secure his escape, but no! They're going to go back in with the song here. There's plenty of liquid bodies in the fight. They just got to make sure that Ember can't get out with that smoke cloud popped in. He hops back to his remnant, but gets hit by the Light Strike Array. Good prediction coming out of the Lina. And Abed finally falls. That's going to be a four streak ended. And almost 400 gold going straight to the Ricky. Yep, Team Liquid bringing it back there. A nice call on the Ember Spirit. And all of a sudden, Mason is the net worth leader here. Yep, Spectre's been, you know, quietly farming down bottom. We talked about Spectre versus Naga just getting free farm, but DC really turned their attention to this Naga, keeping her on her toes, even when she's off in the jungle, and Spectre's just been chilling. Yep, Miracle has definitely fallen a bit, but Team Liquid, they're looking up top. They do have the hook shot out. Yep, Monkey King just going to be jumping out of danger here. Mind Control might go for a... Uh, for a lucky shot. Gonna get pinged here. He's actually in some really dangerous territory. Might get punished for this. They're going in. He's got his rocket flare going. The smoke cloud gonna be huge. Kuroki times this one right. The haunt coming forward as Spectre wants to participate here. There we go. Primal Spring comes down. No one's falling just yet, but there we go. First casualty will be the Legion Commander, but Abed ready to let loose. Mind Control gonna be burning as well. Goes for the cogs, try to buy himself some time. There will be another Chaotic Offering connecting onto two. Matumba Man does not have that song. GH just gonna be trying to channel the ult for all he's worth, and a TP back in from the Lina. Might be enough to break this back up as everyone's looking a little bit low on mana. Dragon Slave comes forward, and the Laguna Blade able to finish off the Spectre. Mason just not giving enough credit to Miracle, overstaying his welcome, and they go, they cancel the Warlock's TP. Boundless Strike to hold back Miracle, but another Dragon Slave secures a kill. We have Hastern on this Lina doing some serious work here. Abed's not safe yet either. Yeah, I think he's going to be bringing in some friends, and although he's out of mana, he wants to fight this Lina. And they're going forward, Miracle getting very, very low. Kuroki trying to help out here, but looks like now he's on the run. Mind Control eating his way out of the cogs, so... Very bloody fight, very long, drawn-out fight, but in the end, Abed still gets what he needs to. Yep, Ember Spirit doing so much damage in these team fights. That Veil picked up. Just so difficult for these guys to fight right now. They, like, Liquid half this combo with the Naga Sleep where they can cog into the smoke screen to try to find an isolate hero like Ember Spirit, Monkey King, or Warlock, but unless they have it, their team fight does not look very strong right now at all. Yep. Switching to overall net worth. I mean, it's been an up and down battle. Currently Liquid holding on to just a little bit of a lead. But as the Spectre continues to go and free farm and clear out the jungle, that's going to change. She's got that Radiance queued up after going for the early urn, and she'll have it pretty well timed. I mean, already getting close to that Relic Gold, about a thousand gold off. And it's not going to be that crazy early 20 minute Radiance we saw last game, but still going to be great. Yeah, definitely still a very good timing. And All they're going to have Hot Tub in 20 seconds here. DC are not, uh, they're very aggressive this game. They're looking for everything. They want to take all these fights. Ember Spirit is super strong right now. Abed getting pretty close to those boots of travel. He'll have them up in just a couple of seconds. And that's going to mean that DC has some really global team fight presence. They've got Haunt if they need to get in. They can have Ember Spirit and Spectre pushing out other lanes and then just have them TP in when the fight breaks out or when they're ready to initiate. The DC's push is looking pretty good. Of course, we can never tap out the Naga Siren, who's now got the, uh, the Relic on the Courier flying into her. And it looks like she will be able to score a tower as well. So Matumba Man just playing patient. I mean, is this Naga where we need her to be or is it starting to fall behind? She's doing perfectly fine for now. Kuroki breaks the smoke, actually, and there's the duel. Yep, just gonna be an easy kill onto that Ricky. More damage stacking up for Bulba here. Well, Miracle is invis. He did see the Monkey King jump there. Yep. Just gonna be hanging around. I mean, it's so dangerous to initiate here. They've got mind control for the hooks, but 
Abed is so slippery. They've got to combo it up really nicely. Miracle goes in with a Light Strike Array. They are able to get this done. Man, Abed can't do anything. He's going to be sitting back. We'll go back in with this flame. Oh, wow, okay. There's the Wukong's command as Mind Control is just getting chunked. Two heroes already dead. Naga's singing, but it's not going to be enough to save her teammates. She's just going to be oh, crawling into the side shop, picking up a TP and bailing out as DC get the fight they were looking for. They turn that hook shot right back around in Liquid's face. Yeah, very weird there. They just, they don't have the damage to kill Ember Spirit through his Flame Guard. It wasn't even close, actually. Even through all of Lina's spells and Clockwork as well. Yeah, I thought for sure Abed would be the casualty and maybe DC could pick up a couple stragglers, but Abed, since the landing phase, has not been giving away anything. Yep, he's definitely taking over the map right now. Freeing up all the space in the world for Spectre. Only 150 gold off of the Radiance. Naga Siren, very close to her Radiance, 50 gold off. Yeah, it looks like they're but just going to have Matumba a Man. scuffle in the woods. Matumba Man goes in, tosses out a net. Now they know Naga doesn't have a song. Mind Control coming forward. We'll be able to zone back Abed, but yeah, Matumba Man just forced to go and mirror image and try to run. Kuroki still getting some good vision for his team, but it seems like Liquid just can't find the fights they're looking for. Even with clockwork initiations, they can't get the lockdown they need. Yep, and Lena's closing in on her Yules now. She actually pretty much has it. Very good for surviving the Ember Spirit damage, and she can also Yules Elsie before he blinks in to cast the duel. And I think uh, DC are very happy with what they were able to do with their early game. They've uh, salvaged Abed's lane phase and pretty much He's so strong in these fights. It's just way too damage, or way too much damage to handle right now. Warlock getting his ultimates off in these fights too. They're sitting pretty comfy. Yep. Here we've got Kuroki just keeping eyes on what's going on behind the tower. Hook shot in. They isolate Monkey King. They are gonna smoke him up, and it looks like he will be an easy kill. But that's a support Monkey King and a tier one tower. DC are still gonna be able to push this out and farm up. Abed just gonna be clearing illusions. Kuroki still hanging back. So, good little fight there from Liquid. Get a pick off, get a tower, keeping themselves active on the map. But still not addressing the big problem of DC, which is the fact that Spectre's now farming up very quickly, has the relic already, just gonna be, you know, five, six hundred gold off that Radiance. Yep, the problem in my mind is that the supports on Liquid are not gonna be able to deal with this haunt at all. Crystal Maiden, 740 HP, pretty much is going to melt to that. Ricky, he's invisible, so he'll be okay, but even heroes like Lena right now are not going to be able to deal with Haunt too well. But of course, Naga Siren, we all know what she does. She makes illusions, illusions carry the Radiance over, and she just farms everything on the map right now. So I expect her net worth to skyrocket. Spectre also farms fast, but not as fast as Naga Siren. And Liquid are just using this Naga Siren to kind of get these lanes out. The rest of their heroes are moving together, looking for pickoffs. They use these illusions to kind of force the enemy team to make risky plays to get these lanes out, and then they'll gank people on these side lanes, but DC sticking S5 pretty much looking for their own play. Both teams thinking of the exact same thing, kind of looking at the other sides of the map, looking for heroes to kill. Yeah, big smoke up here. This was just a Naga hunt at its finest, looking from a Tumba Man being off guard, but again, with a Song of the Siren ready, it's just so difficult to kill off this Naga, unless you chain stun her and blast her apart. She's just going to hit R and reset the team fight. Yep, as the Naga gets more and more items, I think the Song of the Siren will come into play a bit more in these team fights. Then she can really stick her illusions on heroes like Monkey King, Warlock, and just destroy them in these team fights. Bulba crossing the river to join his team, so all of DC pushed up in this top lane. Liquid getting a little more time to farm up. Again, Naga now clearing out the Radiant Jungle with her illusions, and there's a line drawn in the sand. They want to head down to this bottom lane and get this tier 2 tower here. Well, they know that DC are occupied top. Yep, you can kind of just see Liquid. Nobody that nobody farms these lanes except for Naga and Lina just sits in the jungle. That way they always stay off map, they're scary, they're threatening to DC, and they don't really know where they are. They could be in either of these two lanes here. Mind Control and Kuroki set up here on this bounty room pretty much. Yeah, see if Abed. they can catch out Abed. Gonna be pinged out. They bring in Miracle here, and that might just be the burst damage they need. They go, they smoke him up, and there will be Golems dropped in. Meanwhile, GH is just dancing around. There is going to be a haunt coming forward. Wukong's command goes in as the song happens. So unfortunately, Crystal Maiden bites the dust. The monkey's still punching mind control. Mason walking in and out of that song. Burns himself on the mana mind control, trying to TP out, and they've got nothing to cancel it. 
So that's going to be the end of the fight there. Crystal Maiden for an Ember Spirit. They have to burn the song, but still really well done by Liquid. Yep, definitely what they're looking for. They catch Abed. Big streak on him as well. Yep, that's a uh, good amount of money going on to Miracle now. Arlena still thinking about that Bloodstone. Went for the early Yules before going for the Bloodstone pick. It's making sure that she's got the control it takes to hold everyone in place. And Demon, well, tries to get saved by Bulba, but will still end up going down. Not a huge impact kill as he already had his ultimate on cooldown and didn't really have much to contribute to the map, but still some net worth going the way of Liquid. Yep. The advantage Naga Cern has over Spectre is not in the team fights. It's in this sort of game where, uh oh, down bottom Mason can set up on. He's going to die. This is huge. That is a kill that they absolutely needed. Matumba Man there to get experience. Miracle there to soak up the gold. That is super necessary. Now Spectre's not going to be farming for 45 seconds, and this lane's going to push out all the way to the tier two. Yeah, I was trying to say that these lanes are not safe at all for DC to farm. They get pushed out by illusions, Lena's just farming the jungle, and the rest of these heroes like Mind Control hooks out onto Dooley here, he's gonna die as well. Yeah, just They're little They're just picks. looking for kills on the side lanes, and they can't really stop it, you know? They have to take risks to get out in these side lanes and push the lanes out, or else Naga's just gonna keep farming everything, pushing everyone back into oh. their base. Oh, Abed goes to try to get some revenge for his teammates, but Light Strike Array connects, and he's silenced up. He can't run in out of this. We'll get healed up by the Legion Commander, and now, even though GH is dancing, there's still some kills coming out. Mind Control trapped in the cogs, but there will be a Frostbite onto Abed. He's taken some serious damage from that negative burn, but a duel comes out. They lock down the Crystal Maiden, and they they will be able to turn this in their favor. Ember Spirit lives throughout the whole gank, and they take four. Definitely slowing down Liquid's roll a little bit. DC kicking and screaming, trying to reclaim this lead that they had. Yeah, very nice play from DC there. They're grouped up. Liquid looking for maybe a bit of an ambitious play there, trying to dive deep for the Ember. They didn't have the Lena ultimate available in that fight, or Ember would have just died instantly. But Ember survives, turns around with the Veil and the Fire Remnants, and just blows them up. Yep, very well played. And now Ember Spirit, he's got his BKB queued up, so looking to get even more aggressive and be able to survive through these fights. Doesn't want to get, you know, completely comboed down like that. Wants to at least be able to fight his way through it. There is going to be a Shrine TP coming out of Mind Control, who has Hookshot ready. And they are going to bring in Naga Illusions and Naga herself. So looking for a good Hookshot here. Looks like they're going to flare it out. They will be able to get some vision. Figuring out what's going on. The Hookshot connects onto the Warlock. He has his Golems available. Does he just YOLO slap him down here? It looks like the Veil comes out. Demon trying to reinitiate into this fight. Naga, though, she's well, singing. they found Monkey King. She's retreating. Yep. And they're going forward. This will be a Light Strike array going in. Monkey King is in trouble here. Somehow still alive. Slaps down the Boundless Strike before he goes down. But they're able to chase down the Naga Siren. It's three heroes dead. Spectre continues to reinitiate. Still full health, full mana on her. Mind Control, the only survivor, gets held in place by the Searing Chains and completely comboed down. That is going to be a full five-man wipe trading only for a Monkey King. They burned down Naga Song of the Siren as well. It's going to be a Tier 2 tower. This is what DC's game plan was all along. Get the farm up on their Spectre, get Abed huge, and just start taking lanes, winning fights, and, well, being unstoppable. Yeah, Team Liquid there with the Song of the Siren. They found Monkey King. They thought they could take the fight, but Bulba was in range to duel Lina immediately once the song ran out, and they just take that fight convincingly. I mean, they thought they had it set up well with the hookshot onto the Warlock, but unfortunately there was no one there in time to follow up on that, so kind of a wasted effort there. And now Spectre almost had his Mantis style. Legion Commander working towards that BKB now too. Blade Mill doing big work in these team fights, And Abed almost has his BKB. This is looking pretty scary. Yep, quick pause here, as is tradition at these ah, events. quick. <laughs> It'll be quick this time. Um... Yeah, yeah, of course there's lag, but um, yeah, I mean, Liquid clearly, they lost two big fights in a row. It's not looking good. The net worth you see is just piling up in DC's favor. How does Liquid take this back? Like, How do they play calm and collected so they don't fall victim to these DC games? They need to keep playing off of their strengths. Like, their biggest strength in this game is the Naga Siren being able to push these lanes. Oh, bottom lane. Yeah, Bulba moving forward. They get a very quick kill on the Naga Siren. There's no time to react, and a duel comes out in the lane before she can do anything. Ult from the Crystal Maiden by some time, and Ricky will be able to go in. Bulba is still alive, does not die to Kuroki just yet. Now, Kuroki 
Hopping into his tricks of the trade. He'll come out of it. Do they have vision on him? There's a hook shot back in. Clockwork still trying to take this fight. They do lose the Warlock. It's going to be a three for three right now. Kuroki jumping back down to the low ground. And Mason, well, he's still alive. The big boy cores on DC stay up, but it's still a good fight for Liquid. Yeah, trading kills, but of course Naga's Siren goes down. Ember and Spectre live. They're definitely the big winners in that fight, but... Yeah, they just need to keep playing on the lanes. Like, Naga Siren can get these lanes out very safely without any real threat of getting ganked. DC need to eventually show with the hero, and if there are two lanes being pushed at the same time by Team Liquid, then that means somewhere they're going to be spread thin, and Team Liquid can use their numbers advantage to take a uh, favorable fight, but I don't know. If they can't kill these targets quickly, um, then it's not going to be very good for them. Abed has his BKB up now, so he probably is not going to be able to be killed by these sorts of ganks. LC also very tanky, and Spectre, once she has that Manta, she can also start to push these lanes out reliably too. Yep, Bulba kind of, uh, you know, staying quiet. He's not going to be topping the net worth chart, just hanging around middle of the pack, but already 62 damage from one duels. Going to be getting that BKB very soon, like you talked about. So he's just kind of a silent threat, goes in, locks down one person, makes it so Liquid can't reinitiate, can't turn this around, and we'll see how things are moving forward. Miracle, I mean... It feels like Miracle vs. the World here, where we can go in, get a good Light Strike array set up, he can Laguna someone, but after that, there's really no follow-up. He's kind of a, a one-man show here. The rest of his team can't usually get in position quick enough to help him out. Yeah, they've got a lot of things to go through in these fights. They have to, like, tank the haunt, and then out comes Warlock Ultimate, and, uh, of course, Monkey King's Ultimate, and it's just... They can't, like, they can't get back far enough to get these key kills they want. Yep. Right now, net worth and XP still in DC's favor, but Liquid making up for some lost time here. Again, Naga just sitting back passively farming, clearing out all the jungle camps. Her net worth is still top of the chart. She's still holding on here. Yep, she's still definitely very farmed, and she has the entire map to farm, but of course, we've seen her drop multiple times in these team fights. Just gets blown up by the Ember Spirit damage. They're going in right now. Earlier on, Radiant did scan the pit, thinking that Dyer maybe were trying to sneak a Roshan, but Dyer, they're just crawling around Radiant's bottom jungle. Just trying to keep this lane pushed in. Kuroki gonna be leading the charge, revealing if anyone's coming into this area over here. Yeah, both teams kind of just looking for ganks right now. Neither team wants to start Roshan and be put in that position where they can you know, take an unfavorable fight inside Roshan, really swing open this game. Yeah, both teams have the potential for a really nice, small AoE fight. Just depends on who gets the jump. It looks like there will be DC making a move towards the pit, or at least towards the mid lane looking for a pick. Abed, the canary here, seeing if anyone jumps on him, but he's got backup, and he's very, very hard to kill. Again, we talked about that 10-second BKB. He's got himself an Octarine queued up as well. Yep, Spectre can pretty much deal with all these split push shenanigans for now. He can always TP back and haunt into the fight. Now that he has that Manta, there's no real threat of him dying in front of his base. So, they need to find something new on Liquid for uh, them to be able to make plays. DC want to do Roshan, then they can't. They don't do it very quickly, of course, especially without the Spectre, but... It is a possibility of something they can do to kind of force Team Liquid to take maybe a bad fight that they don't want. Yeah. I mean, if the game just keeps going like this, where no one touches each other, DC kind of farm up, they're rotating as a group, if Naga keeps pushing out, clearing all the camps, pushing waves, is this possible for Liquid to win, or do they really need to start getting active and seeking out good fights for them? Anything's possible with Naga Siren, of course, but DC are farming more cores than Liquid are for now. You can see Ooh. LC. Uh-oh. Smoke up, and we're heading down into the jungle here. Kuroki's yep. gonna pop the smoke. Abed just going to be slapping around, looking for more important targets than just the Ricky. Again, pings come out onto Abed. The dust goes forward. They see mind control. The Spectre Haunt comes forward. Who are they going to go on here? It looks like there will be a duel onto the Clockwork. Naga, while well, she's singing while well, she TPs, and there will be a Boundless Strike to hold back this Crystal Maiden. It's going to be a two for nothing. Just a Clockwork and a CM, but that's going to way open up the Roche Pit. Yeah, there's just not enough team fight on Liquid side to be able to take these fights at all. The net worth is still pretty even right now, but you can see that the way these team fights are going right now, they're not close at all. Yeah, and you got to take into account that Naga's holding on to a huge portion of the net worth, and they just keep killing her. So, 
we'll see as the fight goes on. As Ricky's, I mean, he's still playing pretty aggressively here. DC don't have a gem yet, but as soon as they do, these plays are not going to be working out. Ricky showing off that new Diffusal Blade. Warlock walking right into the smoke, trying to force himself up to the high ground, but just traps himself in. Meanwhile, in the pit, Lena's going to be going, finds the Yules up, but there's going to be a duel. Lena going to get punished for this immediately. Crystal Maiden going for the uphill ult, but will just get blasted down by the Remnant. Abed unstoppable. Bulba finally falls, but now Mason's in the fight. They're looking to hold on. There will be a hook in onto an illusion. Mason now Diffusal is going to be mantaing that off, running back up to the high ground. They dodge out that smoke cloud, and it's time just for a clean escape. Abed, though, trapped in the ancient pit. Is he going to be able to get down to the low ground? Remnants out from the backside, and Mason in some serious trouble waiting for that dagger, but that's not going to be helping him out. He's going to be going down, buys out the two plate of alacrities for his Diffusal before he dies, but still really big kills there for Liquid. Yeah, these deep wards that Kroki placed are doing extreme work for them right now. He was able to find the Warlock, they got a... They killed the Warlock off before he could even do anything at all, and they were able to just take that fight. DC maybe felt a bit overconfident there. They they decided to take that engagement even after losing the Warlock. They blinked in, got the duel off on the Lina, killed Lina, but LC pretty much killed himself for that. I guess in the end he did gain some duel damage, but big swing from Liquid there. Yeah, looking at the net worth, it's uh, dipping back in their favor. That was that big mountain where DC won two fights in a row, but the problem is just keeping that momentum spiraling, keeping those lanes pushed in, and it, it's going to get tougher and tougher as this Naga keeps getting bigger, more than halfway towards our Octarine core now, and I mean, how is that going to change things up? Is this Naga getting too hot to handle? Well, it's definitely going to make it very difficult for DC to get these lanes out, more illusions, pushing these lanes out over and over and over. Like, this game is not going to end in one big team fight or anything like that. It's going to take multiple team fights. Everyone's going to have to get extremely far to be able to deal with all these illusions before anything really happens. As you can see, Dubu pretty much dying to illusions right now. <laughs> Cannot handle them at all. Yeah, I mean, what's the best itemization to clear that out? Does Abed have to go for, like, a Shiva's or something? What are you, like, Mjolnir? <laughs> what's going on? Um... He'll probably definitely go back for the Mjolnir. Very good at clearing out these illusions. He almost has his Octarine core. I was wondering if he would go into like a physical damage build later on in this game to help deal with them a bit better because once they start getting into like that 3000 HP territory, the magic damage doesn't really cut it for killing illusions. But uh, yep, Octarine Core probably into the Mjolnir, he already has the BKB, he's doing just fine for now. But the real question is like, Monkey King, he does have the Hand of Midas but he's not able to farm any of these lanes so we're not going to be able to see him get to a Basher or any items that help him survive in these team fights like Shadow Blade, BKB or anything like that. He's kind of the poverty monkey for now if he can <laughs> somehow find some farm. These team fights will get a lot better for DC for sure but of course that's just something not available right now. I mean, Liquid, since they lost those two fights, been playing a lot more evasively, not moving aggressively, not really staying clumped up as a group, not letting themselves fall victim to those Wukong's commands. And well, as we say that, Kuroki just goes for a free pick on the Monkey King, soloing down Dubu. May pay for this with his life, but, you know, <laughs> you win some, you lose some. Oh my gosh, 732 gold from a, a Ricky kill. Yeah, that's a lot of gold, and it goes straight onto the Spectre. So, in the end, it's going to be a pretty big gold swing towards DC. And Mason, I mean, he's getting pretty big, has 1,300 gold saved up. Going to be needing another 400 for buyback, but Manta Diffusal already online along with the Radiance. What does Mason go for next? Um, I think he'll either go for, he'll probably go for the Heart. I think that's the most uh, common for him to go, especially against the Radiance Burner, will help him keep it full HP in all these fights. He may walk into some danger here. Team Liquid are kind of set up here. They do have the Lina in the area. Yeah, he's playing a little bit safe, just clearing out illusions. Like you mentioned, DC, they know their lanes aren't safe at all times just because of the Naga, because of the Ricky's vision. But with Ricky down, there's just a little bit less risk. Yep, all the rewards that Team Liquid had have expired now. They had uh, two deep wards, and one was countered, one ran out, so. Maybe they need to, they feel like they need to go back and get these wards out, but they're doing Roshan instead. They see DC in the bottom lane and they just head straight into the pit. Yeah. I mean, they're gonna definitely take their time with it, but it's melting slowly but surely. It's going down way too fast for DC to really do anything about it. Yep. And uh, oh, there's the TP in. 
Looks like Legion Commander goes forward. There will be a sleep as they're just going to be trying to go through. Looks like Miracle is able to get the Aegis. It's a dire Roche, but now they might make the dire pay for this. Remnants going forward as Abed shows off that BKB, just trying to catch up with Naga, but Naga going to be netting him back in place. Meanwhile, in the fight over here, Mason able to find a kill onto Mind Control. Kuroki takes out Dubu and... Yeah, there's just going to be a Kuroki sandwich here. Gets defusled up. There will be a Yules and a Light Strike Array onto the Ember Spirit, who's getting low, taking some serious damage from Miracle, but able to rend himself back to safety. And now Lena in trouble here, burning down. The Aegis going to be going out. Can they keep her down a second time? It looks like the upheaval channel from the Warlock. Yeah, they are taking her right apart. And they know Naga Siren doesn't have her song here, so that's pretty much just a helpless Matumba man has to watch her teammates die. So trading the Monkey King for burning an Aegis and getting three kills on top of that, certainly worthwhile for DC. Yeah, definitely getting that Aegis off map as well. And again, Spectre and Ember Spirit, they survive in all of these team fights. Abed 15, 2 and 15 now, looking fantastic in this game, pretty much unstoppable, has his full Octarine core in that fight. He's got the Maelstrom queued up there. But yeah, BKB from the LC is there uh, as well there too. And he got the duel off before you know, he got his BKB off and the duel off in the song, so able to lock down that clockwork. Yeah, this I mean... This game looks tough. This Lena doesn't feel like she's scaling pretty well into this mid-game at all. She had a really strong lane against Abed, but since then, I mean, she's picked up her Bloodstone. She's got five charges left. Look at Abed just man up here. There will be another song coming out. And it looks like Liquid want to fight this. Upheaval being channeled from the Warlock Monkey King, though. He's ready to leap down with the Primal Spring into the Wukong's command. And we'll see how that goes down. Primal Spring onto three. This is going to be huge. Another duel comes in. They easily take out the Naga Siren and the Lena. Monkey King still alive through all of this. Mind Control just sitting in the Wukong's command, even through the Crimson Guard, taking some serious damage. Oh, gosh, Warlock is going to get annihilated, but they're trading him for more. Kuroki just nipping away at the heels of Abed, hopping into his tricks of the trade, now targeting Bulba, but can he really run from this? Abed keeping him locked down. Can they keep Vision up on him? It looks like they sure can. Holds him in place with a Boundless Strike, and that's going to be everyone but Crystal Maiden going out. Abed going to be tossing out a remnant, TPing back for some mana, but he'll be back for this. This tower is going to be long gone, and maybe even some push onto the Tier 3s as well. DC, once again, take a really nice fight and blast this game wide open. Yeah, Bulba's got so much damage now, plus 100 and, uh, 112 damage here. Really kills these buildings quickly. And Naga has buyback, but I don't think she could do anything with her buyback at all. Yeah, I mean, she's got her song, so maybe she can put a pause button on this, but then she's pretty easy to lock down and kill. Crystal Maiden just wandering around the back lines of the fight. Yeah, this is getting dangerous. I don't know if we pointed out that Bulba now has a gem of his own, so Ricky not going to be walking behind him and getting vision anymore. Just going to be an easy dual target if he steps too close. Yep, he actually has Mind Control's gem, so they have two now. One on Monkey King and one on LC. Very, very crippling to lose your gem, especially when you're playing with a hero like Ricky. And in these kind of games, vision is so key for being able to do anything on the map. If they lose all the rewards, then it's going to be very hard for Liquid to even push out safely at all. Yep, net worth is just taking a quick 180 spike in back in favor of DC. Double damage room now locked down, so Mason fishes his wish on that one, and they can keep pushing this. Liquid, they're back up with all their ults, but DC feeling stronger than ever. A next round of items coming in as well. Spectre going to be flying in the full butterfly now, so the missed chance on the Radiance as well as the butterfly making Mason really difficult to lock down. Yep, and their lanes are in a good position. Ultimates are up. They're going to keep going right now. They have no reason to stop. Yep, I mean, Naga Siren just sitting back in base. This is not the Naga we know and love that's pushing out three lanes at once and clearing jungle. Liquid have to play this really defensively till they get an opening to go in and take a smart fight. It's just so hard for them to find that opening, especially when DC are grouped up and they have all their spells like that. They're protecting each other. They have sentries in the back so Ricky can't jump anyone. Yeah, I mean, Ricky, he's crawling around here. But again, we talked about Legion Commander having the gem. Uh, Monkey King is going to go ahead and drop it in base for now, so not getting too crazy with it. Picks up his Basher, though, so that next Wukong command is going to get <laughs> real uncomfortable for Liquid. Yep, it's still so hard for them to push into these illusions when everyone from Team Liquid are alive. They wanted to push the mid lane, but one illusion comes out, then the next, and they're just so tanky right now still. All right, so no doubt that DC has a lead, but how's Liquid's high ground? I mean, can they just kind of sit back and delay this and hold out for a long time until Matumba Man becomes this giant untouchable Naga, or is it just DC going to be slowly but surely taking the advantage more and more? 
This game is definitely not over yet. High ground is still really hard. Kuroki actually has a ton of farm on this Ricky and he does a bunch of damage, but it's still the kind of game where where Liquid are kind of playing to survive, it feels like, and DC are playing to kind of finish this one out and kind of close it, you know? If Liquid win one fight, the game keeps going on, but if DC win this next team fight in front of their base or something, it could really be a lot of buildings. GH, well, playing a dangerous game. Temporarily gonna be dodging out some damage. The Radiance Haunt comes forward as they'd like to get the kill on Miracle. That mid Lena is obliterated. Bloodstone down to two charges here. Meanwhile, in the woods, Ricky gonna be jumping onto the Monkey King. Does find a kill there. Demon chasing after him and Abed able to jump forward. Bulba looking for that duel. Is gonna get silenced. Nice smoke cloud popped out and Kuroki may have just juked his way to freedom here. Searing Shays from Abed gonna be off the mark and now Matumba Man songing just to keep his buddies safe. Mason not able to crawl through it, so. All right, Kuroki goes in, finds a quick pick, but losing the Lena there is pretty crippling. Yep, Lena dies, but nothing is really being taken. Look at the bottom lane, Naga Saren cutting all these waves with her illusions. And DC pretty much won't be able to get an objective out of that unless they can take this mid, but I think mid might be too difficult to take, especially when Naga Saren just throws illusions down mid lane. Yep, they're just gonna take the shrine instead and kinda hover around the Roche pit. Yep, Roshan still, uh, two minutes till we see when it spawns. But either way, DC definitely looking like they can take this Roche pretty easily unless Liquid really get their act together and all move as a group and keep good eyes on DC the entire time. Yep, Kuroki actually almost level 25 on his Ricky. He's still able to run out into the jungle and place these deep wards even against the gem. He's just gotta be quite careful of where he walks. Dubu getting caught here by Kuroki here. He's yep. dying so fast. Once again, this is a Monkey King that could go down for a second time. Gonna get healed up by his teammates. Dubu getting the saves. Kuroki jumping around. Finally, Dubu loses his life to a rocket flare from the clockwork. But, you know, good teamwork moment there. Mind Control jumps in, finds a target, but is it gonna be too big to handle? Wow, they blow up that Warlock before he can get his ult off. And now there is gonna be a duel rocking through that Song of the Siren. Remnant damage to help blow up. Abed now godlike. So, in the end, it's going to be a couple Buy more kills going Naga. down. Yeah, they are able to go focus down Bulba. Mason is going to be running out of here along with Abed. Mason's going to be netted, has that Spectral Dagger down to the low ground, but is he going to get a chance to run? It looks like Mason might get be killed off here. Okay. Liquid showing some serious signs of life, and they can go ahead and turn this into a Tier 3 push so quickly. Naga Siren up. It cost her a buyback, but yeah, they're going to be able to take Rax off this. There's a buyback on the Specter, but... That's really expensive at this point in the game. Yeah, buyback from LC. They definitely do not want to buy back on the Spectre if possible, but... Yeah, TP oh, back forward. Sorry, Ooh, quick BKP from Abed. A type of man just going to be running away with that Glimmer Cape, so... Yep, it's just going to be a, a quick hold there. Liquid, you know, you feel them getting that power spike, but then they're not able to convert it to racks, even with the Naga Siren, so... Only a quick dip for DC back to the fountain. But yep, this Ricky is causing some massive problems for DC. He does a ton of damage. That silence is very, very annoying, especially for Spectre when she gets netted like that. But uh, in the end, they get a Naga buyback for half a tier 3 tower. DC can't be too upset about that. Yep, net worth chart starting to drop in favor of Liquid, but still in DC's hands for now. The top two on the board are that Spectre and the Ember Spirit, and both still have room to grow. Roshan, gonna be a long respawn this time. Still about three minutes till that comes up. So for now, DC just gonna keep moving as a unit, looking for some little picks here. Kuroki getting real annoying on this Ricky. I mean, he's just been crawling around, even with the gem, still pretty much remaining evasive, going, planting these really deep wards like you mentioned earlier, and it looks like a courier snipe. There was nothing on it, it was just flying out to the side shop, but still, good value there. Ricky slowing down next item progressions. Yeah, Bull was looking for him with the gem, but he might not be able to find him. They will spot this ward probably though. Yep, they see the ward. Yep. And Naga Siren's actually building the BKB. Oh, just kidding. She had BKB in her quick buy, but now it looks like it's going to be the heart. Yeah, just making those illusions as tanky as possible. Bulba optimistically heading to the Roche pit, but yeah, it's, it's definitely the longer spawn here. Wow, they can actually kill Naga with like Elsie and pretty much any other hero just in the duel. Legion Commander has so much damage right now, that Blade Mail also helping a lot in this uh, lot in these duels. 
Yep, Bulma might in. actually find Kuroki here. Yep, does find Kuroki, goes for the blade mail, and yeah, they're going to be going Boundless Strike to start things off. They bring in the Spectre Haunt, taking no chances. Easy dual victory for Bulba. Now they're jumping around looking for more. They got Spectre Illusions revealing what's going down here. They can cancel Mind Control's TP in time. He pops onto the Crimson Guard, but that's uh, optimistic at best. They're keeping him slowed down, they keep him shackled up, and that's going to be another kill for Mason. Two heroes dead, they've got buyback on the Ricky. But instead, they're just going to back off, reset. Again, another hop into the Roche Pit for Dubu, but still a full minute till it's back. Yeah, they're just, just what can Liquid do at this point? Like, they have the farm Naga's turn, they have the Lina. Ricky is very farmed at this stage of the game, too, but once DC find the catch, you know, Haunt comes out, Crystal Maiden has to TP back to base every time Haunt comes out to avoid getting solo killed from it. It's just causing so many problems for them right now. Definitely an uphill battle. I feel like the only way Liquid get back into this is getting a couple of little picks. Just, you know, picking up the Monkey King with the Ricky, picking off the Warlock before he's able to drop ult, and just isolating the cores, making the cores a little bit uncomfortable, and then going in and pushing. Because Naga pushes lanes stupid fast. Now TP in from the Spectre here. He's going to be trying to apply some pressure, force back this lane, and yeah. DC definitely playing in the buddy system, and it's making it a lot more difficult for Liquid to go for those picks. Really only finding good solo picks from the Ricky when he sneaks up behind someone. Yep, and now Roshan's up. Oh boy. Yeah. Is Aegis what DC need to crack high ground, or will they still need picks on top of that? They'll still need to find some sort of team fight, but Aegis will make it a bit easier. Perhaps they can get Aegis on a hero like Legion Commander, and then she can just get in there and look for some sort of key target to duel. They can follow up with the BKBs and kill whoever that is. But of course, at this stage of the game, a lot of these heroes are going to be saving for buybacks when they're defending the high ground. But DC, looking for the kills instead, they're moving out with the Shadow Blade of Legion Commander. Yep. Bulba just getting in pretty deep here behind the tier 2 tower, just kind of flying solo. Mason maybe trying to zone, maybe trying to force some uh, rotations in, but... Newbie don't really want to deal with this. They're going to be taking the Ricky. He's wrapping the long way around. He's got a gem of his own now again. Taking Demon's gem from him, but they've still got that gem on the Legion commander. So as long as Legion sticks with the team, they should be able to make sure Ricky doesn't get any quick picks. Now Legion just waiting up here, looking for potentially a blink duel. Ricky's going to be pinging here as Kuroki gets eyes on the Demon. Demon spotted. Yep, they're going to be going in, but Bulba right behind him, going to be giving the quick heal and going straight in for the duel. Got the BKB rolling as well. Mind Control moves forward, but that's just going to be two heroes sitting in that upheaval, in that chaotic offering. The Tumba Man going to be songing, trying to delay this. Kuroki is so low. We'll take a positive earn. Now Light Strike Array comes in. The Monkey King is dead, but Mason BKB'd and Giant continues to chase after Matumba Man. Just trying to burn him down with Radiance. They bring Bulba forward. The Light Strike Array not going to be doing much, as that's a long BKB. Matumba Man finally goes down. That's not dead for a hundred seconds no buyback the fight's still going on as they do end up losing demon here Kuroki just charging down the mid lane trying to run away from the rest of DC chasing after him mind control goes in cogs enough TPing away they won't be able to find any kills there but well Roche is now completely opened up if DC want to go for it but they may just want to push out lanes Man, big fight there song of the siren kind of resetting but kind of not really they have BKBs they can kind of ignore it for now and, you know, Ricky was actually able to kill two heroes in the back lines there. He killed the Monkey King off, and now he's going on the Bulba here. Yep, Bulba. Oh, Croak has got to be careful. How's the BKB? Could have bkb maybe a little bit earlier. And, uh, yeah, Ricky going to be hopping back in. Immediately killed off, dropping another gem on the deck. The Legion Commander playing very, very scared. Doesn't even want to go back in to snap up the gem in case it's a bait. But, yep, the rest of his teammates just going forward, pushing out, taking another Tier 2 tower, the final Tier 2 tower in the entire game. And... Looking for another set of racks with Naga still down for 40 seconds. It's now or never clockwork. Held in place by the chains. There's a buyback on the Naga. Forcing that out may just be enough for DC. They may want to back off now, but well, Mason, he's got that full Divai attitude. Just wants to keep going in. Look at though, piling on the bodies into the fight. Getting a little more difficult for DC to take this. These illusions are pretty hard to push into for now. But they got what they came for. They forced the Naga Siren buyback. They may look towards Roshan. Roshan really isn't that important for them. Uh, Spectre, he's got six items. Ember Spirit also has six items, but it could help these support heroes survive the Ricky in the backlines. We'll 
see it's melting down pretty quickly. Clockwork flares the pit. No surprise that it's being taken, and Liquid will just take this opportunity to finally push out their lanes to a safe distance. Gem dropped in the pit, snapped up by Demon, as there's a BKB on Spectre, just making sure no one goes in and gets too feisty, making sure Naga's not walking up and songing right behind them, preventing the Aegis, but well, they'll get it anyway. Spectre's still feeling good. Puts her BKB in her backpack, so yeah, just burning a charge so she can safely backpack it and let it restock as the Aegis oh. sits in her slot. Refresher now on the Spectre. That's nice. <laughs> Yep, as if one haunt wasn't enough already. Now you've got two. That is just absolutely destructive to Crystal Maiden. So DC. Yeah, I don't know what they can do when these haunts come out. They do have uh, items like Glimmer Cape and BKB on CM to kind of survive through this. Ricky is invis. Clockwork's tanky, but still, it's pretty tough. Yep, DC just really laying in the pressure. You can see these Naga illusions cutting the wave pretty nicely, applying a lot of pressure, keeping the lanes pushed out past the river, but this wad of dangerous DC heroes, they're starting to creep in closer and closer to these tier threes. There's already some damage done to the, you know, effigy taken out as the super creeps are pushing in bottom lane. Another lane of super creeps is gonna be difficult for Liquid to handle. You're gonna have Naga's full attention be on just making sure that creeps don't come into the base, not gonna be going for any real aggressive pushes of her own. Yep, it's full base defense duty now. One illusion at a time, trying to kill as much of the wave off as possible. But these are the siege creeps. Yep, double siege creep wave going forward, and Mason leading the charge, just spectral dagger up, and uh, starting to lay into this tower. As that Mjolnir on him, Abed keeping his buddy nice and safe. Now Mason gets down to about half health, does still have the Aegis remember, so this specter is going to be really tricky to kill. Abed dropping down a remnant, TPing out, just filling up on that mana, drinking that bottle down, and he'll be back. Liquid, though, making a pretty nice hold as down bottom you got Kuroki split pushing. Ricky trying his best, does have a TP to get back up to base when needed. Yep, they've got a lot of heals between the Legion Commander and Warlock, just keeping Spectre healthy. Slow Siege in the base. It's gonna go down eventually, but these illusions are making it really, really tough, doing tons of damage here. Again, all alts are up for DC, so they've got that Wukong's command. Haunt gonna be coming in. They're going immediately deep into this fight. There's gonna be a TP in from Kuroki getting back in. So that's gonna be the pause button in the team fight. Is it the reset they needed though, as Boundless Strike holds the clockwork in? Dubu hanging on in a circle, just zoning out everyone from this area completely. The tier three tower taking some damage, but Liquid still wrapping around, trying to take this fight, trying to at least get something for it. Spectre Illusions take the tower down to half, but still rack standing, and seems like DC are not getting what they need to out of this fight. It's not happening quick enough. Are they just gonna fully back and try somewhere else? I think they'll regroup, reset, wait for Mason's Haunt to be up in 80 seconds, and then try again. They've got the tower down to below half HP now, so first Haunt came out to try to start something so we could finally break the base, maybe he could find someone in the back lines to go on. Song reset, Ember Spirit's going back to do his own thing. Maybe they won't wait for the first taunt, actually. He does have the refresher, so he doesn't have to wait if he doesn't want to, but... Yeah, this is a very difficult base to break. You've got all the nonsense clockwork, drops the cogs, prevents them from walking uphill. Lena outspams the wave, Naga Illusions just running through all the time. Yeah, it's, I mean, you can see how freaking annoying these illusions are. Two heroes occupied, just killing one off, and yeah, it's taking Mason's full attention, just running after it, trying to keep the wave safe, so. A little bit annoying, but DC still holding onto the lead. You look at the net worth chart, and Spectre and Ember are surpassing the six slotted Naga. Definitely not an ideal spot for Naga, but she's still holding on, she's still doing her job. Yep, Liquid's base defense is very tough to break here. You know, in the meantime, Kuroki, he has an MKB now, he's ready to fight. He sure is. I mean, this Ricky certainly has not been slacking. Here we go. Yule starting things off. On to Abed. Dragon Slave getting Mason a little bit low, but again, still looking to use that Aegis to get full health, full mana. Remnant bouncing in and out from Abed. Got to be a little bit careful with his mana now. It's getting a little bit low. Can just Remnant TP back to base, fill up, and try again. There's a TP out from Mason. Looks like DC just want to fully reset. Don't want to get too crazy. Just pushing out the lane. Meanwhile, Kuroki has been split pushing the entire time. You talked about his MKB, and yeah, you laughed at me when I said this rookie could be six slotted at 90 minutes. He's well on his way. He is. He's really close, actually. 
I think uh, DC realized it's pretty tough to run into this. They need to perhaps set up a gank onto this Ricky, which Bulba is doing, and he might find him here at the bounty rune. Yep, going in pretty deeply. There's going to be that tricks of the trade. Bulba just sitting there taking it, waiting for the immediate moment when Kuroki comes out. Smoke Cloud coming forward, but man, this is going to be good. They require a Spectre Haunt. There is a dual victory for the Ricky. Gemma True Sight on the deck, but Mason's still able to secure that kill. Meanwhile, this is the fight they were waiting for. Abed finally gets a chance to go in on mind control. They will be able to drop the golems. The upheaval channeled, so GH can't run. Another haunt comes forward. GH starting to melt. Glimmer Cape ain't going to save you now. Mind control goes down, buys back in. The tower under some serious siege. There is going to be the TP forward from the clockwork. That is a very bold TP as he's going to start to get chunked by these Spectre Illusions. But Tumaban comes in and will start singing. No chance for Abed to BKB. It's still on cooldown for seven more seconds. And they're going to be setting up here on this Ember Spirit. Looks like he is able to blink away immediately after Song. And, well, Liquid, they lose their Tier 3 tower, but they're still holding their racks. Yeah, and that was the Refresh Haunt there. They are definitely hanging on. And this is still Naga Siren. Of course, anything can happen when this hero is in the game. Yeah, I mean, looking at overall net worth, it's slowly wiggling its way up in favor of DC, but, I mean, we see how quickly there's just one quick back from DC, and suddenly these Naga illusions can push waves out all the way to past the river on every lane. Yup, and heroes on Team Liquid are starting to get more items. Riki, as we mentioned, is getting very, very farmed now. Lena close to picking up her next item. She's going for the Bloodthorn, it looks like. And that's what's really important, because Naga's already hit this kind of a wall where she isn't going to get much stronger. She does have the Hex in her uh, queued up in the Quick Buy, so perhaps she can surprise the hero with that. But it's going to be really up to these other heroes on Liquid to find the farm. If they can keep scaling, keep getting items, then perhaps they can actually add enough to their team fight to be able to take this. But they spot Miracle out here on this ward. He's in a pretty dangerous spot. Yep, looks like he's going to be uh, potentially in some trouble. TP in from Matumba, man. Now Naga Siren has that song again. Ahmed going to be BKB'd up. A hook shot in. We've got three dire heroes in a very small vicinity. Man, this Ember Spirit starting to get a little bit low. He's rooted in place. Will be able to make it back up to the high ground. But now Kuroki laying in. There is going to be a Wukong's command zoning heroes. And GH with that new BKB just going at it. Able to actually get down the Spectre. This is going to be huge. It's just Dubu versus the world here as he's sitting in the safety circle, but it's not going to keep him up. That's two heroes dead on DC and Liquid starting to really show some signs of life, starting to show that they're still in this. They can still get picks and they can still push off of those picks. Spectre died in that fight to Frostbite on top of a smoke screen with Ricky hitting him. This Ricky does so much damage right now. He's got 300 damage with that MKB Diffuse level 2. And he also has the uh, Backstab Multiplier talent. He probably does the most damage on Team Liquid right now. Yeah, I mean, his net worth looks, you know, not the top of the charts, but just his team fight impact is ridiculous. He's crawling around. His position is really great. He's wrapping around and making sure those squishy supports in the back lines don't feel safe ever. Yep, and Liquid are looking to try to force a buyback off this. TP in from the Naga Siren, gonna be spraying out illusions here. Abed trying to move in, trying to keep things at bay. Man, Abed's gotta be so careful here. This could be huge. If he gets killed here, he's in some serious trouble. Instead, they're gonna be bringing in everything they've got. There will be a duel here as Crystal Maiden's finished off, but Sleep gonna be holding everyone else back. Kuroki trying to run for cover here. Is going to get hit by that Spectral Dagger, but Bulba continuing to blink forward. Both heroes getting very low. The root in place is going to be oh, huge. No. Oh, man, they're able to take out three. All three do have buyback, but Liquid now still got to either spend that money or risk their racks going down. Naga All right, Naga Siren buyback. Very back and forth game right now. It's... You know, DC continue to pick up a bit more net worth, but it's really down to these initiations. It's down to how many bodies are in the fight. If they can kill Abed another time here, that's going to be pretty enormous. Yep, he actually didn't even go down in that fight. He still has his buyback available on top of 9,000 gold. Yeah, he's uh, quite rich, has that MKB queued up, and now he's going in. We'll get Yules'd up. Miracle trying to go and set up the fight. Does still have his BKB at the ready, although it's wearing thin. There is a hook shot in. A brief stun here onto Abed. He's melting so low, bouncing around with that sleight of fist, and will be able to walk his way back to the low ground. But man, these illusions are really starting to be a huge pest. And once again, Liquid drive back DC away from their racks. 
Yep, 4,000 HP on these illusions are a complete nightmare for heroes like Warlock, Monkey King, even LC to deal with right now. And it was just the Naga Saren buyback. Yep, Roshan gonna be up in one more minute, and uh, it'll be great for DC to take, but is that gonna make the difference between high grounding and mega creeps or not? Well, they can slap it on the Spectre again in place of his BKB or Refresher, and then perhaps he can try to get in there and hit the base, but it's so hard. Every time he walks up, there are illusions running in the back lines, clockwork cogs just across the ground, and if he gets caught in a smoke screen again like that without his Manta, he actually dies super fast to Riki right now. He's only got 2,500 HP. Yep. Naga Siren buys out another gem for her team. I mean, everyone's getting real rich right now. DC, I mean, they're postured. They would really like to end this. It's getting so annoying to deal with that Naga spam, but they've got to go. They've got to get pickoffs, and they've got to start getting structures. They've been pushing in this top lane for the last 20 minutes, and they managed to chip down a Tier 3 tower, but both racks still up and healthy. Not bad getting in there, but without breaking backdoor protection, it's pretty difficult to do damage to those structures. Yeah, Liquid, no, they've seen the ward placed on the high ground and everything, but now DC, they're in front of their base together. Yep, moving in, mind control, I and mean, he's getting tanky as a clock here. Gonna get focused down, there will be a duel coming out. Spectre Haunt can be focusing down Miracle on the back lines of the fight. Monkey King Alt comes in, but really not gonna be zoning anyone. It's pretty far off to the side here. Naga Siren goes in for that reset. Now Mason could be BKB'd up. They're focusing down the Lina, even through the Crimson Guard. They are able to get her out. She immediately buys back. Mind control goes down at well. The spec, the Clockwork, no buyback on him either. It's a triple kill for Spectre. Two gems on the deck, and now finally the racks start to melt. They're running away from a Tumba Man as they know this fight could get turned around if DC overstay their welcome. Liquid, they finally get their base breached in this top lane. But it does cost them, it cost them that Naga buyback, or rather that Lina buyback and Clockwork's death. And Demon, probably gonna be going down here. He dropped a gem of his own, but he'll be back up in a minute and does have buyback if shit hits the fan. Yeah, I feel like once Kuroki gets his BKB, which he's very, very far away from, but it'll be like a 10 second BKB. He can really do a lot in these fights, but just doesn't have the space to farm it right now. And pretty much DC, they're looking at the last of Team Liquid's buildings here. They have one melee rack standing left in their base. Well, actually, I lied. They've got mid lane as well. All right, it's not so bad then. They're actually going for Roshan now too. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a pretty nice Roshnik if they can get it. I think DC may know what's up, and they're going to be trying to defend this, but Liquid taking it fairly quickly, and this is Liquid. I mean, they're getting active. They're being the aggressors for the first time in a long time now. dude has got five seconds till that Wukong's command comes out. They are going to go ahead and sleep, just trying to take out this Rosh, and they will be able to secure the Aegis onto Kuroki. So Ricky now going to be even more pesty and hard to lock down here. So jumping forward, all of Liquid going to be able to escape, at least for now, the Monkey King still wants to jump in. Has to wait for that smoke cloud to expire before he's able to go and jump to the next tree. DC stopping in their tracks, gonna regroup and push up as a unit. Not gonna try to chase too deep and get punished by Liquid. All right, Liquid make a nice play. They get the Roshan there out on their Ricky, and all of a sudden they're not in the worst spot anymore. There's a lot of buybacks that have been used in this game, and Spectre still needs to wait for her second Han. She's about 80 seconds off from hey, having it. Guess what we got in this game? All right, we've got the Rapier purchased on the Ember Spirit now. He put the Blink Dagger away in Stash, but that's a lot of damage. Yep, I think Abed's just trying to YOLO this. He knows he's just got to rake up his damage. And, you know, if he drops this Rapier and gives it to Naga Siren, if he gives it to even Ricky, who's going to be backstabbing you for a zillion, that is probably GG. DC, they're, you know, boom or bust right now. Yep, they know they need something really big to be able to end this kind of a game. And now, they just have to deal with this Aegis Ricky. Ricky might have more room to just sit back and farm up towards his BKB and get to his next item. They do see him out on the map, and of course, with Haunt and some reveal on Spectre, they can kill him. Yeah, this game does not look like it's ending anytime soon. Yeah, I mean... If there's one wacky fighter, one person out of position, let's say Abed dies without buyback and drops his rapier, eh, that's that's a quick end to the game. But yeah, this is definitely not going to be you know one push and done. Liquid could hold against Mega Creeps for a really long time. Same story with DC. Yep, and we're about to have the Naga Siren buyback in about a minute from now. 
DC, they're smoked up as four, but they just don't have any lanes out. They're looking for kills, perhaps inside of Liquid's base. They might be able to find Ricky walking up this cliff here. But it's just not going to happen. Liquid, no. That it's just, there are no lanes being pushed from DC. Yep, I mean, you got Naga Illusions pushed it all the way out to this point, and... Well, let's see if Liquid are going to get active here. It looks like they're moving up. Mind Control going to be smoked, and they're ready to crawl up onto this high ground. They see Naga Illusions making their way in, and there we go. Rocket Flare revealing what's going down, and everyone now running for the hills here. DC in a very defensive spot. So Naga Siren did go for the Hex. She has it in her quick, or she has it in her backpack now. Might be able to surprise some of these heroes. Ember Spirit, no Lincoln Sphere on him. Same thing with Spectre, no real way to deal with this unless they pop the BKB, which are both really low durations now. They're both at five seconds. Very tense game now. 67 minutes. We are deep into the trenches of a Naga game and I mean, what does Matumba Man have left to get? He's got 6,000 gold, 3,000 on top of buyback. Does he just, you know, buy moon shards for his team and make them all feel extra special? He could definitely buy Ricky a moon shard, and that would help his damage output by quite a bit. But maybe he'll decide to switch out some of his items. Um, perhaps he'll go for more evasion. There are no MKBs once, you know, Abed starts to show up these rapiers. Yep. Okay. That's just about it. There's not a whole lot for him to buy at this stage of the game. He can go for Refresher, but it really also does nothing. A very tense game here as, well, Shrine's taken out. Liquid finding some space for themselves, taking over a little bit of map advantage, getting a little more control over that Roche pit. So, we'll see. Again, still good time left on that Aegis. Ricky's still sitting on it, but no one's touching each other. This is the point in the game where it is down to one good or bad initiation, and that very well could be your seeding for the entire main event of the Major. This is game three of a best of three between two pretty evenly matched teams. Yep, DC definitely looking very strong in this game. I'm sure they look like massive underdogs, but you wouldn't be able to tell it by this game. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, poked their fun at Onyx for qualifying, but look what they're doing now. They're really taking some good games off of Tier 1 teams. Mason so here on the Spectre. 6,000 gold for him. I mean, again, has the Moon Shard eaten up. Could start feeding his teammates Moon Shards. Ember Spirit's already got one. Is there any way for Mason to keep growing? Has the Refresher in his backpack, but... Um... Perhaps he can switch out some of his items, maybe build something that's a bit better for just killing buildings right now. Like uh, the heart, for example. Very good if he just wants to sit there and hit buildings, but I don't think it makes any difference at all. Um, he could go for like an Abyssal Blade, so he can just haunt onto like Lena or something and just kill him right away with the BKB. That'd be pretty good. But I don't know what he'd want to replace. He's got the full BKB, he's got the uh, full charge Diffusal Blade up, gives him a lot of damage. Manta, also essential for fights. And oh, up top going in. Rogue, he's gonna get caught. Yeah, his Aegis was just consumed. This sucks for the Ricky. He goes down, he drops a gem, and he has no buyback for 120 seconds. That is two minutes where DC can actually get in there. That annoying threat of the Ricky popping in, going for the tricks of the trade, the annoying smoke clouds to hold the Monkey King back and prevent him ulting. That's all done now. They can actually get in, and this might be DC's shot to end this game and actually close out a victory in the series. Actually, his buyback's up in 10 seconds, but yeah, still a very big, big, big kill. All right, so not Ricky as big as I was making it seem. It's still big. Forcing out buybacks on the Ricky, that's one step closer to actually winning the game because he does a ton of damage right now. So Ricky, time we're done. He now can buy back in and probably is going to have to as Mason ready to go up and see if they got to deal with this round of Naga Illusions, which, you know, like you mentioned, 4,000 health on them. They are no small fries, but DC clean it up fairly quickly. And Abed looking forward to getting a chance to show off that beautiful new rapier. Mason's going to haunt really deep into this fight. Gets hookshot in. All the nets coming out on him. Barrett keeps able to refresh. Has that second haunt ready to go. Is going to be casting it out. There is a song. Kuroki's going to be TPing back in after spending his buyback, but these racks getting focused. The Fortify going to be ending soon. The Golems dropped out. GH getting focused here. Just running for the hills and will we'll be ulting, but will be killed off, dropping a gem as well. Bulba getting so low. This Legion Commander just running for her life, able to blink back down to the low ground. So two buybacks forced out on top of the initial Ricky buyback, and no one from DC goes down. Huge win for DC there. Yeah, they get a ton of buybacks. 
Lots of building damage as well. Now, Team Liquid only have two range racks, or sorry, one range racks and one melee to work with here. And that was the refresher from Mason there. He refreshed Haunted in, and then gave Bulba Vision to find the duel off on Lina. Lina actually doesn't have buyback. He bought the full Bloodthorn in that team fight, but they just, they don't know. Yep, at this point you just expect all your cores, unless they've recently spent buyback, to have buyback. 71 minutes in, and again, not looking to end anytime soon, unless DC can actually take a fantastic fight here, or get Megas, but... Yeah, again, Megas don't mean too much when you've got, like, a 8-slotted Naga. Yeah, they'll probably definitely try to still defend Megas. It'll help a bit, but still, they can deal with him for now. And Ember Spirit, the whole fight, he just sat there clicking the building. Spectre distracted them in the back lines with the haunts, same with LC. And now there's no glyph for Team Liquid as well. Yep. Going forward, Abed just, you know, putting that Mjolnir on a creep, because why not? Ultra late game territory right now. Who's got moon shards? Well, we can't see buffs from this screen, so we just click around there. Abed, again, he's got his. Bulba still could buy up a moon shard for himself. Has that 1,500 gold on top of buyback. Warlock, I mean, again, surprisingly poor for 72 minutes in the game. No ags on the horizon, no refresher for him either, so could see a little bit of growth coming out of that Warlock. A second golem might mean, you know, a huge amount in these fights. Yep, it's time to purchase that 73-minute Midas, get your gear on. <laughs> he is sitting on 6,000 gold, but I don't feel like anything he buys is really going to do a whole lot. Maybe he can buy some items that help him survive. He could go for some cheap items like Vlad's or something like that, but... Besides that, he does have a Lotus Orb queued up. Lotus Orb, good for removing the Hex of Naga Siren if she ever does decide to use it. I actually sick. don't think she's used it once this game. Liquid, they're going to get aggressive here. They're leaving their base. They're going to be meeting up in the river. Radiant, they're going to be scanning here, and it looks like Mind Control will be tripping the smoke. They know that he's going towards that Invis rune, and this is going to be a great place for DC to jump, and it looks like Abed will lead the charge. Hookshot going to be off the mark, still on cooldown for another 40 seconds. DC, I mean, they're playing this patiently. They're waiting for all their heroes to get in place before they really try to take this, but Liquid will get a chance to retreat, and nothing comes of it. Yep, that's one of their smokes. They'll have to wait another 10 minutes for their next smoke if they don't have any in stock. Oh, Abed gonna get silenced here, hops into his BKB. He's now scared there is gonna be another haunt coming up, but Matumba Man with a song collecting all her little chickens in her nest, and now they're gonna be trying to turn this back around. Legion Commander now focused down, gonna be silenced up. There will be the golem dropped. Golems are now magic immune as well. Bulba going in, trying to get the duel off onto the Ricky. It's going to be a close one with Abed coming in. They will be able to kill off the Ricky, and he doesn't have buyback. That's two heroes dead, no buyback in the back lines. GH just desperately trying to TP back in, but DC, they're all up. They're all healthy, and they want to keep pushing here. Two heroes done. There's only three left to defend. They have to cut through Naga and all her friends, but this is looking doable for DC right now. Yep, yeah, this is definitely their their big moments. Abed's gonna heal up. He does have the rapiers, and there's no glyph or buybacks on Team Liquid at all. Ten thousand gold to spend. Eats up a mango, just buying up some vitamin C. But now Monkey King gonna get blasted here. Takes that Laguna Blade. They do still have Ember Spirit jumping around. GH killed off once again. No buyback for the Crystal Maiden. Only two heroes left in this match for Liquid. The Mega Creeps are up. Matumba Man's locked down. It's looking like DC will finally do this. 75 minutes into the game. They're taking Tier 4s. Naga buys back in it with one last hope. But Liquid, it's looking grim. DC, they finally get their act together, and they're going in, attacking that ancient Abed, still sitting back with one rapier, shooing at these structures. Matumba Man goes forward, Bulba getting low. But with the ancient half health, they're just delaying the inevitable. Abed is going to get zoned down. Abed drops the, drops rapier. the rapier. Mason going to be left to sleep. Miracle going to be picking up the rapier. Although Mason... Might be able to turn this back around. Boundless Strike comes in. The Ancient still taking a ton of damage. They're able to focus down the Legion Commander. And finally, 75 minutes in, the Ancient drops. It will be a DC victory up against Liquid. A very tight series going all three games. But my god, Brax, we are already getting treated to some A-tier Dota. And we are only in the group stage of the Kiev Major. Yeah, what a game. They say Naga games or snooze fests. That was no snooze fest. I know she put other t uh, she put the enemy to sleep with her ultimate, but on us. That was a great game. Oh, great pun, Brax. You're just the best.
Anyway, that's going to do it for us here. I'm Android. That's Brax. It was an honor to be casting uh, the Kiev major group stages. Thank you so much, PGL, for the opportunity. And we're going to go ahead, cut to a quick break. But yep, that's going to do it for us. The stream will temporarily go offline while we get ready to start round five of the group stages. Two more best of threes coming at you today. So sit tight and get ready for some more amazing, intense Dota. Thank you so much, guys.